Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about finding the IQR in a normal curve, under a normal curve. Okay, and we're going to do one problem from the previous section that we did, just for more practice. So let's go ahead and define Q1. What Q1 is, means that 25% of data is to the left. Okay, so basically all this is is a fancy way to say the 25th percentile. So Q1 is the 25th percentile. Okay, and what about Q3? Q3 is the same thing, but it's 75% of data is to the left. So Q3 is just another way of saying the 75th percentile. 75th percentile. Okay, so the IQR is Q3 minus Q1, okay, and this is where 50% of the data, 50% of the data fall between that. So let's do these couple examples, and something that I wasn't doing too much in the last videos was describing my context at the beginning of the problem, with is my W's. Okay, so the first one, who? Who am I interested in? Remember the first two are the, 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 the most important, who? The who here is all high school students. That's my who. This is important when you're doing these problems. And, and the what? What are we interested in these students? Their SAT math scores. This is my what. How about where? I don't know. How about when? When was in 2011, okay? When is 2011? Why? Hey, it's fun. It's a whole bunch of fun looking at stuff like this. How they get them? They had a census, which you might not know yet. They took everybody. Okay. So, so here, let's go ahead and do the first one. And remember, we want to go from percent to Z to our x and I'll do this the formula way. So we're starting on our normal or standard normal distribution. Standard normal distribution. Okay? So that's 0. This is 1 and I want the top 10%. The top 10% is going to be over here somewhere. Top 10%. This is the top 10%. Remember the whole thing's 100%, so it's the top. This is below over here. This is the top top 10 percent so just think about it whatever score is here this is a z-score okay but any z-score that's going to go to the right here will be in the top 10 percent so any x value that's over there that's why we have to turn the z into an x which i will do one quick video to show you how to do it on your calculator which is really easy. Okay, so you have to realize, are we dealing with a positive or a negative z-score? That's going to tell you which table to go to. We want a positive because we're on the right side of this. We're on the right side of zero. So we're going to have a positive z-score. So we're going to have to pull out our positive z's. Okay, so I'm looking for 0.1. Oops, sorry. See, I almost made the mistake myself. Okay, top 10%, what would be the percentile? The percentile would be the top, would be the 90th percentile. Okay, so if we're looking for the top 10%, see this is good that I even made the mistake. Okay, because I'm not looking for the right on here. I want the right, but on the chart it only gives me the left. It doesn't give you the right. See how that's white right there and this is shaded? We want the left, so I'm actually looking for 0.9. Point nine, right here, just under it. So it's 1.28, 1.28. So my z-score is 1.28. This is a good, good one to memorize. That's asked a lot. I kind of knew it already. That's why I kind of knew exactly where to go. It wasn't one of the crazy ones. So basically, what this means is, now I'm going to do my population distribution. A population distribution, which is 502. This would be 584, okay, and I'm looking for this score right here. That gives me 10% here. This is my population. 
Okay, and the way we do this, um, I'll just do it the quick way. So it's going to be 502 plus, how many standard deviations? It's 1.28 standard deviations. And the standard deviation is 82. So this is going to be my answer. And let's pull up my calculator. 502. And it should make sense, it should be more. So a student has to get at least a 606.92. And I'll write it in context. A student, the who, a student must get at least a 606 on the math, math SAT to be in the top 10%. Okay? See this number's right over here? 606.92. If he gets anything better than that, he's going to fall under this whole range under that area right there. Okay, the IQR. The IQR is a little bit more difficult, but not too, too bad. Okay, now we have to go back and look at our definitions. And our definitions say, see, see this is going to be your Q1. I'll call this Z1. I'll call this, let's see, 25 percentile. And I'll call this Z2. This is actually going to be your Q1. That's what I'm going to find. That's going to be your Q3. So from here, this area right here is your 25th percentile. Okay, and this here area here to the left will be your 75th percentile. Now, if you notice, I'm going from this, okay, over a certain amount, and I'm going over here a certain amount and since they're symmetric this distance from 0 to the z1 is the same as the distance from the 0 to z2 so when you whatever you find whatever one you want to find they're going to be the same exact number but one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative okay so z1 let's find z1 so z1 falls to the left of 0, so it's going to be on the negative side. So let me pull that through. And since it's on the left side, I'm actually looking for 0.25. I'm looking for 0.25. It's like it's running away from me. 2, 1. Okay, 0.25. 2514, 46. So I'm going to take this one. It's a little bit under. It's a pretty good amount, but we're just going to take it. Negative 0.68. Negative 0.68. Negative 0.68. That's for Q1. For Q3, which is the 75th percentile, it's going to be a positive. You'll see. You'll see. It's the same thing. I'm looking for 0.75 because that's the how much it's to the left. Okay, so 0.678. It goes a little above it, but it's it's basically it's the same thing. Since it's the same thing, it's symmetric. It's the same distance away. I just want to look at the negative one real quick. Yeah, it's the same. Okay, so now to find Q1, I just use my formula. So Q1, I'm going to call that Q1 now, not X1. So this is Q1 equals Q1 equals the mean, which is the mean I have 502. Okay, since I'm on the left side, it's minus this many standard deviations. And for my Q3, 
it's going to be the same thing but I'm going to add so I'm going the same thing with both ways I'm subtracting 6.68 and I'm, I'm subtracting 0.68 and I'm adding 0.68 okay so this one we'll be able to get so I got I have 502 minus 0.68 times 82 so that's 446.24 and here I have 502 plus as I'm going to the right this is going to be 557.76 am I done no I'm not done because Q uh, the IQR is Q3 minus Q1 so it's, this is my Q3 I go ahead and subtract off 446 24. So my IQR equals 111.52. One, one, one okay, so that's how you find the IQR using the table. I'm going to do one more video showing you how to do it on the calculator, and that'll be it. So thank you for watching. Have a nice day.